Well, talk about an uncertain result. Talk about unexpected results. Here we were at the halfway stage. We've already talked about it in Quick Buzz Combox that, uh, well, 180 just not enough. Punjab have made a right mess of this. They should have got 220. They've fallen short. What are they going to do? Do they have the bowling? I think they've pretty much ticked plenty of boxes there. Uh, they had one gap in a newcomer, Vaiba Varora. He ticked that box. Rahul Sheher came in. Whether there was due or not, he bowled beautifully. Liam Livingston could do nothing wrong. He could go buy a lottery ticket today after his 60 of 32. Three overs, two for 25. Other than Shivam Dubey, there was really nobody in yellow making a serious effort at chasing down 180. 54 runs is a serious margin when we start talking about net run rates. For the moment, I don't think Chennai will be thinking net run rate. They'll be thinking, let's get a point on the board first. On Quick Buzz Live, we look back at uh, what's been a convincing victory for Punjab. I'm joined by Partiv Patel and Ajay Jadija. Once again, Ajay, if we look back at this, um, Punjab had the match in their grasp in the first 15 overs with batting, then lost it again, then won it again. At the end, sort of they've done one side of the Punjab. Yeah, they've done a Punjab again. And at half time, we were talking about, you know, that policeman who, you know, diverted the traffic. Punjab went into the ditch. I'm sure that they probably at this stage feel good we were in that dip because there was an atom bomb that was coming. And being in that ditch actually saved them. 35 for 6, 35 for 5 in 7 overs. From there, they was all gone. It was over. I think it was at the right at the top, the burst at the top. Uh, I don't know whether, you know, CSK took it too easy or they tried going for anything and everything right at the top. But uh, once those five wickets were gone, you know, you were only looking at run rate or, you know, just hoping that Shivam Dubey and Dhoni would do something that we are, you know, accustomed to seeing him in the past. But uh, nowhere close to also getting close to that total. Yeah, but we talked, uh, we might obviously talk about uh, the later bowlers. Rahul Shaher bowled well. So did Liam Livingston. It was his day. But an innings like this, as Ajay said, with it being set up at five down, you have to give so much credit to the youngster swinging the ball early and really denting them by Baroda. I think the game was done in for six hours itself. I think, you know, when, when you have when you have new ball bowler taking wickets like this and power play and taking wickets off, you know, the set players, guys, proven players, I thought, you know, it's, it's a great way to make your debut. Someone you know, who's been doing well in domestic cricket gets an opportunity on a bigger stage like this to come in with all the nerves, with, you know, as we all are talking that 180 wasn't enough. I'm sure Punjab Kings would have been thinking as well in their dressing room that 180 wasn't enough. So, you know, so there was extra pressure on new ball bowlers because they knew that if they don't get early wickets, you know, they would be well and truly out of the game. But there was only one way they could, you know, get back into the game. That was by taking 20 for 3. And that's exactly <laughs> what they did by Vaiba Varora. I thought, if, you know, uh, he again showed uh, that's something which he spoke on Combox that you do not need that 140 and if, you know, if you can swing the ball accurately and then you can still take wickets. And that's what happened early on. Rituraj Gaikwad having an absolute nightmare. Three matches in a row. That's how he started every year since 2020. Robin Uthappa then the man in form. 14 for 2. Moin Ali, so much expected of him. 22 for 3. Outwalked the captain. Similar inside edge onto the stumps. 23 for 4. And uh, Ajay then came the Raidu dismissal. Short ball. Fended off. And the other debutant. One side, Vaiba Varoda was making waves. And Jitesh Sharma behind the stumps. Outstanding catch. And that was it. Five down. Yeah, once he took that outstanding catch of a short ball, is flying in the air, and you know, young, young, younger men, younger legs into the side. You know, you see, you know, the athleticism that comes in, and uh, from there on, you know, you you had an experience, Mahendra Singh Dhoni on one side and Dubey, uh, but the young man tried his best, but you know, it was too late. I mean, once it's five down, and I, you know, I've been uh, one of these. Uh, person who keeps repeating this, you know, batting at 6, 7, 8, 9, we look at that. But uh, having spent a lot of time at that number, I can tell you, you bat differently once it's 4 down or 5 down. It's different when you have, you know, wickets in hand or, you know, very little time to do it. But once you've lost your top order, no matter how explosive a player you are, you just cannot do it because you've still got time. I mean, look at this game. Now you've got lost 10 wickets, add 10 balls to that same number of balls left to the runs that you need to get. So, you know, you know, in a 2020 game, people don't look at, you know, dot balls we look at. 
but it's not just that dot ball that comes but it's a wicket ball that has you know pushed you back as well so for me it was that and i'm absolutely with uh, parthiv you know any game i can't remember many games maybe one out of 100 games some team might win from there but it's always about the top start and today was probably the worst start that you can think of because it wasn't even that they were 60 for you know in six overs and they've lost five wickets neither did they have runs on the board nor did they have wickets in hand so you know from at that stage there's not much anyone can could have done uh, a little disappointed that he, they didn't even get anywhere close to it i mean one is you know it's going to be tougher you understand that but today i think csk just lost the plot today uh, they went out there overconfident i think i think they were overconfident because rituraj struggled as you said but it was robin uthappa's also you know wicket when it came when the ball was swinging you said the young man had swung the ball and you could take time at at half time we were talking here saying look they have enough time to get in rituraj gaikwad can also take his time so it was a total that you needed a solid start and they just didn't get one and which is why i remember the other day when they chased down 200 punjab they actually didn't look as if they were exploding and hitting every ball for four which was shikhar dhawan and mayank agarwal they took their time and then of course things followed a lot later but uh, uh, purely in terms of uh, csk we talked about it this is their second biggest uh, defeat in terms of number of runs and also the first time since 2018 that they've been bowled out now that's uh, absolutely significant in 20 overs parthiv to be bowled out there will be a few questions being asked in that camp a few furrowed brows as they look at 3 and 0 which is no matter how long a tournament it is 3 and 0 is 3 and 0 it is it is huge i've been i've been part of the team where we had 5 and 0 and i think so i can understand you know how pressure pressure mounts you know once you have you played first game then you say oh, it's just the start then you play another game and say it's just two games and then suddenly now it's third fourth and it feels like you know 20th or 30th game the pressure you know keeps on mounting there is no doubt about it and i'm sure csk would be thinking about it they would be thinking about the approach as well i think you know my assessment so far of this tournament is it's not about how many runs you are getting in power play i think it's about you know how many lesser wickets you are losing in this power play Uh, there are if you have wickets in hand you will definitely get those runs even the while you know when we were talking in 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 mid innings time when they were what they needed 120 in 10 overs they would we were still thinking you know they might get it but they had lost five wickets if it was only two wickets or something then it would have been a, a different story but csk's approach i think you know there there were quite a few loose strokes uh, if i may say that you know if moin ali stroke or or rutraj gaikwad or robin utappa i think they need to put a bit of more prize on their wicket Yeah, but you'd have to. I mean, obviously, Chennai will be looking to take as many positives as possible. Yes, it was in a losing cause, but Ajay Shivam Dube was outstanding. He had a he had a tale of two halves the other day when he had an f- outstanding innings, and then he was asked to bowl at the absolute wrong time and gave 25 runs away. But he's kept his shape, kept his character, kept his head, and if he had some support at the other end, this was very much they would have got a lot closer for sure. Yeah, I mean, if they had to look at this game and take some positive out, it's Shivam Dubey, and especially after what happened in that last over that you just mentioned to him in that 19th over, it would have dented his confidence, or you know, you might feel a little low. But I think he's just carried on from what he did in that first inning in the last game as well, because he played well. We haven't seen him play as well or as freely as he's done in the last two innings. Uh, he played brilliantly. You know, he was batting with Mahendra Singh Dhoni, so he probably had a man to you know guide him along as well. Uh, he looked very good, but he didn't also go on to finish the job because uh, you know a player who has a good day, and I believe this. You know, on your good day, you must be able to take your team to the end. If you don't take your team to the end, invariably you don't get to bat enough. You generally get to bat ten, twenty balls. So you, uh, we look at that innings and say, listen, he doesn't have the opportunity to get those big scores. Here he was looking fabulous. He's timing it well. So only positive. Yes, uh, you've got to say Shivam Dubey's batting has been a big plus for chennai super king but uh, it hasn't uh, materialized into any of those wins in the last game maybe that one over changed it but it did show that this man is mentally tough because it's not easy to come back mentally from what he'd done with the bowling in the last over so all credit to him but certainly the man who could do no wrong today after that sterling effort maybe we were a little bit harsh on him suggesting that had he played a little differently stayed on they could have got 220 doesn't matter in the end he did his bit and did his bit at the time when he was most comfortable but after that liam livingston was tossed the ball 
picks up one wicket, the key wicket of Shivam Dubey, and then the catch, caught and bowled of uh, DJ Bravo, very first ball. So it shows he's, as they said on commentary, Prativ, 360 player. And when you can contribute like that, it shows why you paid the big bucks. Yeah, absolutely. I think see, uh, someone who can bowl, someone, if you're a top order batsman, you know, we, we're not talking about Liam Livingston, the batsman here, because we know what kind of capability he has. But if, if your top order batter can give you those overs like this and if he can get you uh, those wickets, I think the whole balance of the team changes. If you look here, you know, Odin Smith, uh, we spoke about, could be the weak link out of this bowling attack. But because your know, Livingston was bowling well, he was picking wickets, you could actually hide Odin Smith there. So, you know, it is, you know, worth an absolute gold here someone can give you two overs gives that extra cushion to captain you know if someone's going for runs you know that you can fall back to uh, someone like Liam Livingston and probably there was no due today as well probably lesser due but I thought due or no due but I think you know someone as an all-rounder like him is, is an asset to any side yeah it certainly is and Parthiv Ajay mentioned that you know a cushion for the captain it's one thing to have a cushion and you can sit back in a chair and rest on it comfortably but before you get that cushion, you know you've got to be able to hand it out at the right time. Who do you bowl, when, what you do with your field. And certainly, Mayank was impeccable today through the through the well, less than 20 overs. Yeah, he had a great day except for his batting. He probably you know disappointed himself as well. Uh, but I think as soon as he tossed that ball to Weber of Aurora and that ball started to move, I mean, suddenly from a man who's starting off an IPL career with, you know, pressure or nerves or whatever you may call it and before you start a game you look and you say maybe the young man could be the weakling he turned into be you know the, the main strength for that side and picked up those wickets then Rabada you know numbers don't tell you the story all the time I mean he had that one bad over against uh, Shivam Dube when he whacked him for a couple of sixes but he picked up a wicket Odin Smith came he picked up a wicket uh, Mayang Agarwal was impressive and I like that I, what I liked about him is that, you know, he kept every bowler who came on to bowl, the first four bowlers, the seamers, were all bowling in attacking positions. So they were only looking to attack. And I think that's the best way to play the game because if you're attacking all the time, the worst could be that you might go defensive. When you start defensive, there's nothing else to fall back on. So I liked his captaincy. He was aggressive. He didn't worry about, you know, the ball getting wet at the end or will the spinners do the job. You almost had spinners bowling after the you know, 14, 15, 16th over, even at the end. You had both the spinners bowling. So he, he played with instinct. He didn't go with a roadmap saying he's going to bowl one over or who's going to bowl at what stage. He, he read the game and he kept going along with that. And that's something that I always admire because this game is always played on the ground. You get into positions where you have to make decisions and Mayanga Garwal made some great ones today. Yeah, there was no roadmap here because he didn't want to be on the road in case that Anna Saleh policeman turned <laughs> up again. So he made sure no roadmap. Let me do somewhere, look somewhere else, and do it my way, <clears throat> just so he doesn't turn up again. But yeah, Rabada, good point. If anything, if you look down that list, he he was in fact probably the weak link. Two no balls, escaped both of them uh, in terms of the free hits, but nine point three three. You could see that. So he was able to get enough options there. And Vaibhav Arora gave him that. But in terms of the other debutant, Parthiv, brilliant as he was, with Besto possibly to come in, Rajapaksa still in enough kind of form as a batsman. Now they've got a problem of plenty. Who is their long-term prospect in the season in terms of the man with the gloves? I think to start with, they would obviously be very happy that you know they gave an opportunity to a youngster and he responded really well i thought he kept brilliantly you know we do talk about that you know explained how difficult that catch was where you know he had to change direction because it was on the body and you know he had to change direction and fly and and, and and not to interrupt you parthiv add the dhoni catch to it exactly so that's some i, I was going to talk about that dhoni catch was even better than the uh, you know the one which he took you know down the leg side to a leg spinner and you know someone was you know, trying to play that maybe a sweep or a kind of pull kind of a thing. But, and he was very confident. He was the only one you know, who actually went and you know, demanded that you have to take a DRS. And it's not easy. We just said uh, when MS Dhoni uh, you know, shakes his head and, and you still you know, go against him rather, I mean, maybe and say, no, no, I'm very confident that yes, he's definitely hit it. So it just shows that confidence level of youngsters of this time that you know, we know that you know, we are here to play. We know what we can do. I'm well, very happy for him. And to answer your question, uh, uh, I hope they stick to him. I hope they stick to Jitesh Sharma. And, and Besto is someone 
who can field, who, who's fielded for England as well when Josh Butler was keeping. So, you know, that may not be the case where, you know, someone a weak wicket keeper may not field, but that won't be a case here. But, you know, I hope they stick to Jitesh Sharma and there'll be an interesting choice. Now, it won't be between Jitesh Sharma or Johnny Bairstow. It'll be between whether to, you know, stick to uh, Banu Rajapaksha or get in Johnny Bairstow. Yeah, so lots of choices for them, but I don't think uh, Punjab will mind having a problem of plenty. That's the pace bowling department, the new pace bowler, Liam Livingston, the all-rounder, and the only other department we haven't spoken enough about, Ajay, is Rahul Cheher. We talked about him as a possible threat. Yes, the game may have been done and dusted, but he still had to hold his shape, do the job and finish things off. Three for 25, full quota of four overs. He certainly did. As you said, he finished the job because all the other games he was probably fighting a battle where the others were not giving him, in, getting him into that position where he could, you know, take over the game. He was always pulling the game back. Today, when he came in, you know, the game was already in the bag in, in one sense, but he still carried on doing what he did. He may have got hit for a couple of sixes or one six, I remember very clearly. He hadn't been hit for a boundary in the first two games. But he, he did the job and he finished it. And he bowled at a time. Not that, you know, the game was going to go away. But if there was any hope that was going to come for Chennai, he, he didn't uh, let them even get that little sniff to even close to the target. He totally controlled the game and he's bowled exceptionally well in these three games. And it's mind you, it's not been easy. I think, you know, spinners have had a tough time. Normally, we see in the IPL, spinners have some help from the wicket. But all these games that we've watched, there's not much help. Even today, I can't, you can't say that you know it was a wicket that the spinners had some help from. But he's carried on doing his uh, good job. And he's as aggressive as ever. I, I always say this. He's, a, he's got a mindset of a fast bowler. You know, he doesn't think like a leg spinner. He thinks like a fast bowler. And it's nice to see him uh, doing consistently well. And, you know, Chell doing well at the other end, which is great for Indian cricket. Yep. Uh... We know the competition. We know the competition was there just before the World T20. And it was uh, Rahul Cheher who won that battle. But it doesn't matter. Cheher's come back strong. Cheher still continues to go strong. And we saw from that one stroke that he hit that he can bat a little bit too if required. What does this mean to the points table? 3-0, and that we know for Chennai. They've lost their first three. They're at the bottom there having played three. Hyderabad also at the bottom, but they played only one. Mumbai have played two. And they haven't got any points on the board. But for Punjab, two wins out of three, looking much happier. Yes, they will have loved to it to have been three out of three, but that's the kind of season they expect to get. Rajasthan, Kolkata, and Gujarat flying high with four points each. And Punjab have joined them there, having played three games. That's the points table that we have. But uh, that is only as far as Monday's action is, or rather Sunday's action is concerned. I keep thinking it's Monday because it's a single header. Yes, it was a rare Sunday single header. And we look forward to the action on Monday. Who's coming up on Monday night? This is Hyderabad against Lucknow. They've just played the one game. No points on the board. They'll be desperate for a win. Lucknow have uh, shown enough potential of what they have. And this is back to the D.Y. Patel Stadium in Navi, Mumbai. Patim, let me come to you first on Hyderabad. They have a team who've won a title, but certainly as far as their early running is concerned, they'll have a few concerns with uh, at least their personnel and form. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, Punjab, Hyderabad would be thinking that, you know, they get first their 11, right? They, they need to make sure that they play right brand of cricket. I thought, you know, they have youngsters. I think, you know, this IPL, we are talking about, you know, youngsters making a mark for themselves. Here, you know, they would be hoping that someone like Abhishek Sharma or Rahul Tripathi or Nicholas Poor and someone, you know, who we all think that has capability. Washington Sundar batted really well in that last game, but they would be, you know, hoping that he gets you those wickets. And Bhuvneshwar Kumar did come back into form that helped, uh, you know, that wicket which we saw in Pune helped him. But I think, you know, they would be, Hyderabad would be hoping that, you know, they come out firing, they come out with a different kind of mindset, attacking mindset like Punjab did today. But yeah, you know, they'll be hoping that the youngsters, you know, put their hand up and, and, and give them match-winning performance. Yeah, Ajay, they've had time to think in a sense. Maybe an advantage with Chennai have already played three, they've lost three. Hyderabad have also got no points on the board, but just one game played. So, in a sense, they've been the one team waiting and watching everybody 11 games down. So, that may just work to their advantage and they might say, OK, we've seen what other teams are doing wrong. Let's get our house in order. 
Yes, certainly. I mean, it's an advantage, especially because this year, how it's changed. I mean, the wickets have been totally different from what we are used to seeing in the IPL. People are playing differently, like you said. Uh, you know, people are not using their best bowlers in over 19, 20. They're trying to finish the game early. So, a little trends you can pick from there. And Hyderabad's a good side. I mean, I mean when you look at that side, you know, you, every man in that team, in that 11, in the last game as well, are all capable of winning matches. And, you know, and they've got their, I think the way I see it, how they're trying to play is, you know, Kane Williamson's their main man who holds the innings together. Everybody around him is a, a stroke maker, somebody who goes out there and doesn't think too much, is always attacking. It, they just didn't have a good start. I mean, somebody like Nicholas Pura and Adrian Markram, you know, these are players Rahul Tirpati did exceptionally well last year for KKR. So, there, there is enough talent there. And even with bowling, I think when you look at that bowling, uh, it's a very interesting bowling attack for me because they've got so much variation, the different kinds of bowlers. Umran Malik with that express pace, Natrajan with his yorkers and left arm, he adds a little bit of that. Bhumneshwar Kumar, we've seen over the years. So, it's it's not that they don't have uh, the skills. And it's only been one game. And I think in that game, what happened is very similar to what happened in Chennai against Punjab. Is, you know, the top order got blown away. And once you are blown away, you know, four or five wickets down, then no matter who's coming into bat, you have to play differently. So, and, and not very often will you get that kind of a start. So, if you're not going to be five down for 60, 70, then that batting lineup should do the job. So, not I don't see many changes because one game, you start changing too much. Uh, I, I would worry. I think they'll probably uh, go with a similar side. Maybe add another seamer somewhere and take that batsman, extra batsman. But uh, Romario Shepard, is he, is he the guy at number seven? Yes, you know, he's, he's very much there. He played, he played the last time. More yes. batting and less bowling. So, is there something that they can think there? Because, uh, you know, it's the bowlers who are winning it for teams this year. So, maybe that's the only change, but maybe too early in the tournament to tinker with that side. Yep. If we look back at them in the last few seasons, Parthiv, including the season when they won, it's been their bowling. They were the side who could put 130 on the board and say, oh, that's enough. We'll defend it. And this year, again, their formula at the end of the auction, you saw, oh, familiar site again. It's Indian bowlers, Indian bowlers, Indian bowlers. And of course, the option of Marco Janssen, Sean Abbott, Romario Shepard, all of whom are really bowling all-rounders in a sense. So, do you see any of the other guys getting a go at this stage? Or is it too early? I think it is too early to you know, give it a go. To a, I mean, that's something which you know we all speak about. That you uh, once before the tournament start, you basically try and zero in around your playing eleven and try and give them at least three or four games. And Hyderabad is such a side that you know they they like to scrap through. They are not they are not the flamboyant side which we uh, see throughout the IPL. They they are the side you know they scrap through. They'll they'll try and you know uh, tell you uh, not on your face kind of thing, but on the field they'll you know uh, dive around. They'll try and you know save every run. That's how. You know, the signs which Sunrisers have shown is the ability to play as a team. And here, if you look at their side, there is there isn't any flamboyance in here. You know, there, there is Kane Williamson again, Kamed, Abhishek Sharma, Rahul Tripathi, or whoever you name them. These guys are you know calm-headed players. So you need everyone to you know make sure that they, they come out as a team. I think that's something they would be looking to do tomorrow. Yeah, I think we were probably getting carried away because of the fact that uh, it's been. A fairly decent uh, time in the tournament that's elapsed and they've played only one game. So, maybe we're just psychologically feeling, oh, it's been a while now. Hyderabad, no points on the board. Just one game down. Everybody take calm, take a breath. It'll all be all right when the time comes. But what about the opposition? What about the opposition that Hyderabad are taking on? One of the two new franchises. We've uh, already seen what they're capable of with uh, Quinton de Kock, Evan Lewis the other day, outstanding form. So, they've had the up and down, Ajay. They've seen the, the other side of it when they lost to Gujarat. And now they've tasted victory and they've tasted victory with some of the players who didn't perform in that previous game. Yeah, I think they've had a good start because, uh, like you said about Hyderabad, it's only been one game with them also. It's two. What I liked about that team is, yes, they've lost one, they've won one. But they went down fighting even in the one that they lost. Uh, so, you know, even when you've not had your best days, I mean, K.L. Rahul's your captain, you expect him to score a lot of runs. Uh, they lost that game when he got out early, but others showed that, you know, they were all playing their part. And it's a side that, you know, not GB, but GG has put together. Uh, in that middle order, there's a, you know, a kind of players that they're all domestic players, but, you know, Huda, Kunal Pandya, 
they're interesting kind of players. You know, you don't bank on them as saying that, you know, they will win you games. But they're all playing their part. I look at this side and, you know, they're totally different from other sides. They're a side that has a jigsaw puzzle that's been created by them. So everybody will play their part. And that is what they've shown me in the first couple of games. Yes, they've lost one. But in the one that they won, they showed everybody comes and does their job. Ravi Bishnoi probably is the only one that they probably feel a little, you know, disappointed at the start because you retained him. Uh, you expect a lot more from him. Avesh Khan will certainly come good over a period of time. Chamira is the one who's really uh, surprised me, at least. I don't know about the others. He's been doing well for Sri Lanka, but he's played a major role. So it's, it's a side that is also, a, you know, a pretty balanced side. And their style of play is going to be pretty simple. Uh, they will, they'll, like uh, PP mentioned about Hyderabad, these guys are also people who scrape around, you know, uh, Huda, Pandya, they've come in at crucial places. And I think a lot will depend on them, unless KL Rahul at the top takes it away for them. But that five, six, seven are players who are Indian players, they understand Indian conditions. And they're fighters. They're both fight. I mean, literally, they both fight with each other as well. That's a different story. <laughs> but they are fighters with the game. They will give their best. They will try and squeeze something out, try and get an over here and there. Uh, the other day, Tevatiya got the best of uh, Huda. But even with his bowling, he, he's adding to that side. So this side will play differently every game. And that's always been uh, Gigi's style. And he will always get the best out of it. Yeah, I was hoping to get... A, a different kind of a description. I think Partey was spot on with Sunrisers in terms of being scrappers. Uh, and maybe we can give each team a personality as we go on. So, we've given them a personality. Uh, maybe we can make find a more definitive personality for Lucknow as time goes on. Again, it's just been a couple of days. Maybe by the end of the show. Give it a thought. I'll come back to you on that. But Partey, here we talked about... Um, Various players, Dushmanta Chamira, other than a forgettable day in the field the other day, it seemed that anything he did went wrong. Misfield yeah. day, drop catches. But uh, Badoni, I mean, just one time you can say, okay, fine, newcomer, he's done well. Twice. And that shows that, uh, you know, when a guy can do it twice, it's not just a, a find, it's someone who's there to stay. Absolutely. I think the, the, we all talk about skills a lot of time. You know, we say, you know, someone came in and played that cheeky shot or someone, you know, played that six over, six over mid-wicket or something. But, you know, you have to be temperamentally really strong to, you know, execute those kind of shots. And I thought Ayush Badoni's temperament to me was the, you know, standout feature out of this. He was calm. In the first game, they were, you know, they were five down. And then when he came in, he batted very calmly. He took his time. Then he took on Rashid Khan. In the last game, we were chasing 200, you know, uh, went out there and played that. Uh, that's a six over square leg where he showed that you know if you're temperamentally strong you are you're clear in your thoughts only then you can execute those kind of shots so you know quite impressed with Ayush Badoni there is no doubt and like uh, you know Ajabai said that you know, I've seen him I've seen trials and he definitely did surprise me with the, uh, the kind of shots which is which is played but you know heads off to him I think you know this IPL is so far, it's all about Indian youngsters. We spoke about Ayush Badani today. Today, we are talking about Vaiba Baroda and Jitesh Sharma. So, they know clearly that you know talent which we are talking about are getting that bigger stage and they're performing really well. Yeah, I think temperament really sums it up, Ajay, because we, there's, lo there's lots of talent around in the country. But translating one, translating that talent onto the biggest stage when you're facing international players and, of course, having the temperament. One thing that he said in the interview stood out for me. He said he was told uh, by both coach and by, I think it was only Gigi who said it to him, that play the ball, not the bowler. Now, we've heard it said before. It's one thing to say it, it's another thing to do it. And I think he did exactly that. Lockie Ferguson at 145 coming at you, class of Rashid Khan coming at you, he didn't play the bowler. He played the ball. Uh, he's been uh, very impressive. I mean, the young man and... Parthiv rightly pointed out that, you know, more than the skill, I think the temperament is what really, you know, impresses you. Uh, even in that first game when they were struggling, they put in a partnership with Huda. He looked calm there, exploded at the end. And in the second game, when they won, when he walked in, uh, there was who was uh, somebody who was still behind him. One of those uh, experienced players who I can't remember. Kunal now. Pandya. Kunal Pandya was there. So, you know, when he walked in, we were watching the game together and said, you know, is it a good call? But we walked in, played the first two, three balls. You know, he didn't get 
to strike it well, but he looked calm. I mean, he looked, and that's what you want somebody at the end of the innings. And we've seen over the years, and the whole country admires Mahendra Singh Dhoni. Yes, of course, for his skill. But the biggest strength that Mahendra Singh Dhoni has shown is what? It, it is his temperament. And this young man has shown that temperament. And for ages, I think in cricket, there's always been this talk. It's always, you know, what, what is the difference between boys and the men is only temperament. And this boy has shown, uh, maybe it's too early to you know, even make a judgment on him. But what we've seen till now is that he's got an amazing temperament. And he's got a good team, as he says. He's got a coach and you know, Gigi with him, trying to guide him and telling him exactly what to do. And he certainly did what you just said. He watched the ball and didn't watch the bowler. Because Lockie Ferguson, thinking back a few years, you know, international bowler bowling at 145. You know, if you were watching the bowler, you would be looking to take a single. But here, it was a young man who was, you know, watching the ball and was ready to whack it out of the ground. Yeah, and I don't, and I think Gigi was quick to say that let's not start calling him superstar yet. The only reason maybe KL Rahul and company have referred to him as baby AB is because of his initial. It's not because they're comparing him to De Villiers yet. So just relax. It's only because of the initials Ayush Padoni, AB, AB De Villiers, AB. But Ajay, the reason why I remembered who it was next was because it gave us the moment of the match. <clears throat> Deepak Huda gets out, Krunal Pandya comes into bat. First thing they do when they cross each other, a little bit of glove love. And later on in the field, I think was it Huda who took a wicket and then Krunal comes straight. Oh, Huda took a catch and Krunal comes straight first person to hug. First person to hug him. Yeah, he took the wicket. So that was that was a good moment in that game. Yeah, I mean that that's how it is. I mean, you you have fights or you have difference of opinions sometimes, but when you start playing for the same side, uh, suddenly things change. I mean, it's not just here. I mean, look at the other side. You've got Butler and uh, Ashwin in that side as well. They both seem to be getting along as well. And I think modern day cricketers think differently. Uh, you know, the, you know, one year you're playing for one franchise, next year you go to another one. So they've been brought up in a different system, uh, setup as well. So fight and these discussions are for us to make it more interesting. But I think when they get onto the park, they're in the same team, they're wearing the same shirt, and uh, they will do anything to help each other out because at the end of the day. Uh, all of them, all four of them, or in two of them in this case, uh, understand that unless your team wins, you will be nowhere. So they will get together, and it's always nice to see. A little fight is also nice, a banter is nice, which makes watching the game interesting. Not when you're on the same side, when you're in the opposition. It certainly is. I mean, here were two guys with differences settling it, but you can imagine players who go head to head on the field for international sides are coming to share a dressing room. That's always been the beauty of this tournament and generally all franchise-based tournaments. But it gives us a bit of fodder, some stories, a few jokes to tell. We were taking odds on if Huda and uh, uh, Krunal were to bat together. Are they, is there going to be a run out or not? We haven't seen that yet. We'll wait for that <laughs> to come. We'll wait for that to come. No, but there could be a run out, but that will have nothing to do with what happened in the past. Fair enough. It'll just, it'll just fuel it if there was. It'll just fuel it. Yes? No? Maybe? Oh, sorry. Oops. All right. We'll leave that alone for now. Joy factor question. Ajay, you had some ideas on what it was. So, I'm going to put the question up and then give you first dig at answering it. Which incredible cricketing achievement ha has happened only twice in T20 cricket within 40 days of each other in the summer of 2018? Two players involved later up ended up playing for the same T20 franchise. Hold the answer for a moment, Ajay. Yeah, I think uh, Joyda is being very kind when he starts giving you hints, then you can find it. Because when I saw that hint, you could you could say, you know, two guys going back together had to be, you know, the run out of Ashwin and uh, Josh Butler. Am I right in thinking that way? Because it happened very, uh, very quickly after what happened in the IPL as well. It was... We were already talking about Butler and Ashwin together, but unfortunately, that's not the right answer. It's a fabulous Ooh, guess. And I'm glad cool Joy is giving us questions that have so many different possible diverse answers. Parthiv, any, any try? I have so not even given a thought to it. I thought, I, 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 I don't know. Trust me. Um, I, 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 I have no clue about it, I think. I, I know. Let's, let's hear it from the I, guys who have given answers. Let's hear it from Joy himself. Well, not from himself. Let's hear it from uh, our team who put it. Century and Hattrick in the same match. Andre Russell and Joe Denley. Yeah, much forgotten Joe Denley. He's been around franchise cricket. He put himself into the England side and equally quickly put himself out of the England side. Wow, that was something. Century and hat-trick in the same match. 
We can imagine Russell doing it, but uh, Joe Denley doesn't in- get enough opportunities with his uh, spin bowling to take wickets, but he's done that. And who was it who spotted that? I must confess, I was with Ajay on this one. It could only be one person. It could uh-huh. only be one person who did it. Our little miniature encyclopedia gets it right. Well done, Tonmoy. We'll probably see you yet again many times this season. When it comes to the tough one, the difference, as Ajay put it, the boys to men. Yeah, Tonmoy is one of the men when it comes to quizzing. Lots of boys around. So well done to all of you. Tonmoy and the rest of everybody who's been joining in yet again on a Sunday evening. Thank you so much for joining. It's been a relatively lighter day, but it's not been a very light day for Chennai. They are three down, no points on the board. Punjab will be delighted, but uh, I've certainly been delighted to be in the company of Ajay Jareja and Partiv Patel. As I said, three people from the state of Gujarat. I may be half, but still, I'll take credit for now getting together. I guess, uh, gentlemen, at this stage when we say goodbye, we should be saying Aujo. To everyone, Aujo, definitely Aujo. Aujo, Jai Mata Ji. There you go. No better way to say it. Thank you for watching Prick Live. We'll see you all soon.